New reclamation works are planned for tours, which will yield about 172 hectares of land for industrial use and to improve road connections to tours port. JTC Corporation, the government agency overseeing Singapore's industrial spaces, told the Straits Times that reclamation works in Northern Tours Basin are slated to begin in 2025 and end around 2029. The project will meet land demand for future industrial uses as part of ongoing plans to rejuvenate the older parts of Jurong and Tuas industrial estates, which were developed in the 1960s and 1970s, said the agency in response to queries. JTC added that newly reclaimed land is also necessary for infrastructure and road network connections to Tuas South and Tuas Port which is being developed in four phases and will be fully completed in the 2040s. The 172 hectares of new land will be nearly double the size of the 93 hectares by the Dory Estate and will add to the roughly two. 200 hectares meant for industrial use in Tours and Tours South. As part of the upcoming reclamation, JTC and the National Environment Agency NEA will pilot the use of incineration bottom ash, a solid residue from the burning of waste in incineration plants, as reclamation fuel. This pilot is among recent efforts to either reduce incineration waste entering or remove such waste from Samukar landfill, Singapore's only landfill. NEA is studying the feasibility of mining about 10 million cubic m of waste to reclaim to a spot, phase 3, from the landfill whose 28 million cubic m capacity is expected to be reached by 2035 at current waste disposal rates. The government has reclaimed land over time to expand to us, a former swamp land, for industrial use. With about 650 hectares added in the 1980s. Since that time, the Northern Tours Basin area has housed firms such as offshore marine servicing and pharmaceutical companies. JTC said it had in 2015 and 2016 engaged 25 companies that will be affected by the reclamation to give them sufficient time to relocate. Since then, 22 have vacated their premises, while the remaining three are expected to relocate progressively. By 2025, said JTC, adding that reclamation works will be executed in phases and coordinated to minimize the impact on companies. Ahead of the upcoming works, an Environmental Impact Assessment EIA was conducted in 2023, and its report made available for public viewing from November 10 to December 8 at JTC Summit, subject to the signing of a non-disclosure agreement. JTC, said the EIA, which like other assessments for land reclamation projects, look into the impact on water quality and marine ecology, among other things, concluded that there would be no significant environmental impact from the project with the implementation of mitigation measures recommended by the consultant that conducted the assessment. Such measures could include installing silt screens to limit the flow of sediments and minimizing dredging works, said JTC. On the use of incineration residue for reclamation, JTC and NEA said a small location in northern Tours Basin under a drainage channel has been identified where the use of incineration bottom ash could be trialed in a controlled manner. The agency said that about 25,000 cubic m of incineration bottom ash could be used as part of reclamation works but did not state the total volume of fuel needed for the project. The scope and specification of the pilot will be confirmed before a tender for reclamation works is awarded, they said. Environmental monitoring, including long-term groundwater movement, will also be carried out to evaluate the potential environmental impacts, said JTC and NEA, adding that no such pilot has been undertaken before, Although incineration bottom ash has been used in other trials, such as part of base material in a section of Tanner Maricos Road, JTC said it will review feedback received from the public.
before finalizing the report and starting reclamation works, during which mitigation measures will be assessed as part of an environmental management and monitoring plan. Mr. Leonard Tay, head of research at Knight Frank Singapore, said that even though land in tours is currently not fully utilized, opportunities to add land should be taken sooner rather than later. Given Singapore's limited space for development and the country's many competing needs. However, Mr. Alan Chong, Executive Director of Research and Consultancy at Savio Singapore, questioned the need for more industrial land given global developments such as a potential land bridge in southern Thailand that might have a dilutive impact on manufacturing for export activities in Singapore and lead to less demand for industrial space in the long run. He said that even if demand picks up unexpectedly, factories could easily go multi-storey. JTC itself has developed such buildings in recent years. But Mr. Tay noted that not all industrial activities can be cited in high-rise buildings, and provisions need to be made for those requiring land. He added that land reserves for industrial use will give Singapore the flexibility to adapt and pivot as manufacturing and trade trends evolve over time. And technology advances. With the phase development and opening of tours port, Mr. Tay said vehicle volume in the area will increase, and having a road network in place to accommodate this increase will remove the need to build new roads after demand has gone up, which will be disruptive.